Amen. So turn with me to uh, Hosea, book of Hosea. When I look at conditions, what's going on in our, on in our nation, in our community, some of our churches, in our homes, we need to look at the, the Old Testament version. Book of Hosea is one of the prophets. He's right after the major prophets. So if you see Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Daniel, then Hosea. So all those other ones are kind of being, y'all got it? Y'all with me? Y'all kind of quick. All right, Hosea. All right. And so I need to read a couple of verses. Now here's, I need to do something a little different too. Chapter one, chapter one. But I want to talk this morning from the subject, understanding God's love for us. <clears throat> understanding God's love for us. And I need to make sure that we really, really, really understand exactly the love God has for us and what he did for us because of that love. It's because when you only grasp that such love that you can really effectively love someone else, including yourself. Many people struggle in relationships, whether it be romantic, casual friendships, or even on the job, working relationships, because they've yet to really grasp and understand the love that God has for us. And when we look around the nation, the world, our homes and communities, and, and even some of our churches, and, and the old Burt Bacharach tune comes to mind and says, what the world needs now is what? Love, sweet love. And now don't get me wrong that when we all understand God's love for us, it still doesn't mean that we're going to agree on everything. It doesn't mean that Republicans are going to agree with Democrats on everything. It doesn't mean that one nation is going to agree with everything another nation says, even with their decision on the European Union. It doesn't mean that even churches are going to agree on everything, let alone the members in the church are just not going to agree. Deacon Court does not believe everything that I believe, and I don't believe everything that Deacon Collins believes, and I don't believe everything Pastor believes, but I said that if it's at 50%, you're in the wrong church, and so we ought to at least be on 70 and 80%. Amen. Amen? And so we're not saying that when you understand God's love that you're going to agree on everything, but the more we understand what genuine love did in our vertical relationship with God, the more we understand what genuine love looks like in relationships with others. Especially in times of disagreements. Amen? Amen. So now I did first quote Romans 5 and 8. You can write that down for homework. But it says, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So let me sneak up to this verse in Romans before we skip over to this picture in Hosea. Paul, my buddy Paul, wrote this letter to the church at Rome as a legal argument to the Jewish and Gentile converts at Rome. The Jews that had converted to Christians thought their salvation was greater compared to the Gentiles who had converted to Christians. Paul reminded them not to compare to one another, but to make their comparison to God and his righteousness. In this light, Paul reminded them, and therefore, he says, none of us have any righteousness of our own to stand before God. Uh -huh. And Paul talked about what I call the three H's. He looked at that in that chapters 1 and chapter 2 and 3. He talked about the heathen and their perverted religion, the hypocrite and their pretended religion, and the Hebrew and their powerless religion. And then he says, I don't care if you Hebrew, hypocrite, or, or, or heathen. He says, if you are human, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and don't have any righteousness of your own. And he says, come judgment day, we can only be justified by having Jesus' righteousness. And then he used that legal term that I didn't understand at first called imputed. He says, unless you had Jesus' righteousness imputed on you. And I think I gave the, gave the illustration, I don't know if it was to the youth or somewhere, and, and, and how my daughters, when they were in college, and I had given them a little allowance, and I told them, I said, now this is all you're going to get. Don't be spending that, all of that. And needless to say, and, and you know, Daddy, we can manage our own money. We're adults. You don't have to give us that for a week. You can just give us everything for the whole quarter. It's silly me. I did that. Gave hundreds of dollars for the whole quarter, and after one week, they were broke. <laughs> I was hot. <laughs> I was hot. 
I like just like I don't care what they do. I ain't feeding them anything. And they were mad. They didn't have a dime to their name, but they my kids, you know. And so sooner or later, you know, I didn't have to go down there, but from 500 and 600 miles away, I can go to, I can impute my righteousness, my money, my financial righteousness onto their account. And by faith, all they had to do is go up to that ATM, ATM machine, and by faith, they just knew it would not be rejected. And that's how it is. When, amen? And so God, Jesus, we hear impute. Jesus is righteousness. But that's, that's, that's in Romans. He imputes his righteousness on us come judgment day. So when we stand right there, right? And we don't have a dime to our spiritual name, our ATM machine. All right. So, 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 so Paul says come judgment day, we have to have Jesus's righteousness. And so throughout the book of Romans, from chapters 1 to chapter 14, Paul presented all these arguments as a lawyer. The, law, the argument of salvation, the argument of sanctification, the argument of dedication, condemnation, glorification, and a whole, a whole bunch of arguments. And then couched in between all of those arguments is the argument of justification right here in chapter 5. Almost to our real text. He reminded the Jews how Abraham was called the father of the faith and then concluded the argument by saying, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But he says, not only do we have the peace with God, we then receive power of God that the love of God be shed abroad in our hearts. Yes. Paul reminded them that therefore, that none of us have earned this privilege. He says we were spiritually weak and helpless and unable to do anything on our own. But God commended his love toward us. Well, while we didn't have a dime to our name, he imputed funds to our ATM account. Yes, sir. And all of this love is demonstrated in Hosea. So now we're just not getting to Hosea. Amen? Amen? All right. And so this love is demonstrated in the obedience of the prophet of Hosea. I kind of like Hosea. I'm glad I'm not Hosea. But he wasn't like any of the other prophets. All the other prophets had some excuse when God called them to the ministry. God called Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, whoa, 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 I'm too young to do that thing. He called Abraham. Abraham said, whoa, 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 I'm over 100 years old. I'm too old to be used. He called Moses. Moses, not nah, easy. No, I, I stutter, Lord. I can't really talk. I split my verbs and do all of that. And then, and so he called. He called Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, "I'm too young to talk." Abraham said, "I'm too old to talk." Moses said, "I can't talk." And Jonah just wouldn't talk. <laughs> Jonah just wouldn't talk. All those prophets had excuses, but the Bible says that when the word of the Lord it came to Jonah, saying, "Go," and the very next sentence says, "But." God called Ezekiel, God called Daniel. It's in the word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, go. And the very next sentence is, but. But yet when the word of the Lord comes to Hosea, he says, rise and go. And the very next verse says, so he went. I said, look at this, some type of robo-prophet. And so Hosea was faithful, and his faithfulness had nothing to do, check this out, with what others did. Come on. I need to highlight that because we live in a time where we need folks with that spirit of Hosea. Instead, we have too many folks that says, okay, but. We need folks like Peter who get out the boat. We need folks who would trust God and launch out into the deep. We need folks like Zacchaeus who would go out on a limb for yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Instead, folks says, well, I would, but you know my children have soccer oh, practice on Sundays. It sounds good, but I have line dancing on Monday. It sounds good, but my favorite show comes on the same night as Bible study. That sounds tremendous, Pastor, but right now I'm working on my career. That sounds good, but you know my sugar too high, my blood pressure too low. This ain't right. And, and, and yet they still didn't change their diet. And, and they said, I really like to do that. And if I can make up a word, amen, we know, I know we got a few English scholars, but if I can make up a word, seem like the church is filled with the, uh, uh, the, the, the most most okay buddiest folks I know. Okay, but I, I, I would, but I, I, I want to do that if, but when the word of the Lord came to Hosea, the very next verse says, so he went. Yet our churches are filled with the most okay buddiest folks on earth. Mm -hmm. Now I would have to admit, 
Y'all say now? No. Now, 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 now. I would, and so I, I'm with you. I'm feeling you. I would have to admit that what God asked Hosea to do was not an easy task. If you can read all of that for homework, God told Hosea to go and marry this prostitute. Not one that used to be, but one that still was. Okay, so that's a difference there. Because we don't care what people used to be, amen. Because we all used to be, amen. But this woman was still that. And God tells Hosea to go marry Gomer, the prostitute. God wanted to send a message to the Jews that she was symbolic now. But she was a real person who had been whoring after other gods. But instead of a normal sermon, he could have just told Hosea to go preach that. But instead of a normal sermon to the prophet, God wanted to use this prophet's life to illustrate that message. I said, well, better him than me. Amen. <laughs> Not the way I would have done it. I know that's right. Amen. And, and so, but he didn't ask my opinion. And I thank God I wasn't Hosea. And, and, and so God gave a command to Hosea and, 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 and God gave a command to Hosea. And the Bible says he remained faithful. Yeah. I'm like, get out of here. What kind of... Well, anyway, he remained faithful. His faithfulness had nothing to do with what somebody else did. And if we don't get anything else today in this message, we should at least walk away with that. Never let what others do affect your faithfulness, your worship, your service for your God. Too many folks give up on God and the church because of what the preacher did. I said, I can hear, you know, well, this preacher once did that. I said, so? You know, you know, uh, he did this. How can you go? Because my mama did this. My daddy didn't do this. And she did. And he did. And won't that. You know, no, no, no. Don't let what others do yes, stop your faithfulness yes, to God. Yes, sir. I know it hurts. I know it definitely hurts. And I understand. But the goal is to never let what others do affect your faithfulness to God. Yes, sir. God understands the struggle. He understands the journey. Yes. He doesn't want you, but he just don't want you dragging your feet doing it. Amen. Amen. So God wants you to remain faithful. And Hosea demonstrates this in his marriage. Mm -hmm. In his marriage. See, the marriage did not change his wife, Gomer. She said, I do, but she didn't. She had gone through the ritual of the vows, but really never had a change of heart. It's like a fake confession of Christ. She went down, my buddies, you know what she did, Reverend? I said, what? He said, she went down in the pool of baptism. She went down a dry devil, but she only came up a wet devil. She didn't change. <laughs> she didn't really have a change of heart or understand what real love meant. Therefore, it was just a matter of time. Mm. Proverbs 11 and 22 describes her very well. It says, as a jewel of a gold in a, a swine's snout, so is a fair woman or man which is without discretion. Uh -huh. In other words, you could take a pig and clean it up, give it his best bath and, 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 and put some gold and jewelry on it and, and do all of that stuff and bring the pig into your house. But the first chance it gets when it gets out of the house is going right back to the pig pen. Uh -huh. Why? Because it's, that's his nature. And Gomer's nature had not been changed. But Gomer was just symbolic of the Jews and all of mankind. So she's really uh, symbolic of us as well. Yes. I say that because we have people in politics and even in churches and even in pulpits with three-piece suits and, and button-down collars and cufflinks and, and alligator shoes and, and look nice on the outside but are just rotten to the Come core. On. Come on. Gold watches on their hand and yet no grace in their heart. Silver on the outside and even no sense on the inside. And so, and so that's what the Proverbs was talking about. But before we say amen to all of that, the Bible reminds us that before we came to Christ, and some even after the Christ, in some form or fashion, we were no different. That's right. We were no different. Yes, sir. This Gomer spirit is also described in Proverbs 26 and 11. It says, as a dog returned to his vomit, so a fool returns to his father. And Christ said, well, what are you saying? Pastor, well, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. See, a dog can eat something, and, 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 it, and it may not be the right thing, and vomit. And then in the stomach is all an easy go over in the corner, make all this noise, and vomit up that mess that, that made him sick. And yet, 15, 20 minutes later, a dog would go back and lick it up. And the Bible says that Christians can be the same way. 
The very thing that's done made us sick spiritually, we try to, we go, we go, oh God, you with me? We'll go, Sister Gentry, we'll go right back. Do you hear me right again, Gentry? The very thing that's done made us sick, the very thing God has said, I'm trying to get out of your life, it's making you sick, it's, it's keeping you from being blessed, you wonder why you can't move up any farther than you are in your spiritual growth. The very thing that's holding you back, you're throwing us, he said, I'm trying to get it out of you. And we go, is it just me? No, no, all right. Maybe it's just you. No. <laughs> no, it's all of us. And so God says the very thing that he's trying to give a, get out of us, the very thing that's breaking your fellowship, making you spiritually sick, you return to. The very thing that God is trying to get out of your life, you keep going back, licking it up. And so we need to pause and even ask the question, what is it that's really blocking your blessings? What is it that's making you sick and keeping you keep returning to? And so it's the very thing that God is trying to get out of your life. And then we try to wonder why everything is not coming up peaches and cream. Yes, the rain, uh, what it says, the rain fall on the just and the unjust. We know that bad things can happen to good people. We know all of that. But sometimes God said it's really the very thing I'm trying to get out of your life that you're holding on to. Amen. Yes, all right. So back to our story. Hosea and Gomer. Gomer was out there. You know what kind of Gomer was, all right? Yeah. Gomer was out there doing her thing. You could read all those at for homework. She was out there making a name the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. And yet Hosea remains <laughs> faithful. I praise the Lord I'm not Hosea. But anyway, and Hosea was, and, and the Bible says he remained faithful. Can, can y'all see that? Can y'all? Yeah, y'all know what to do. Yeah, and remain faithful. Why? Because his orders came from God and not man. He did not let others, including even his wife, hinder him from serving and praising the Lord. It was a special case, but that's another sermon for another day, and I'm glad it's a special case. But Hosea remained faithful, and his life is actually symbolic of Jesus. We call that a type of Christ when Jesus would not come down from the cross. And if we're going to pick up our cross and follow Jesus, if we're going to do that, it implies that we have our own special calling, just like Hosea, have our own special purpose and assignments from God. And we have to grow in such a way that we're just not going to let anybody else hinder us from serving and praising God. Hosea and Gomer had a few children. And God even made him use the name of those children to, as, as a prophecy to the Jews and about their rejection and their captivity. And, 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 and one of them, I think he says, name one of them, Lo Rahama, and, and, which means no pity, and, and Lo Ami, no, more, uh, no longer my friend. And, and I remember one time when Don and Stephanie, they were horse playing, and, and I kept yelling out there, y'all need to cut all that horse playing out. And they were tussling, and they were fighting, and I was trying to watch the game. And they kept on, and then all of a sudden, one of them got hurt. I heard furniture falling over, and they come, come downstairs crying all of a sudden. And so I quickly, Brother G, looked at their feet and, and saw there was no blood. And once I really knew that they wasn't okay, I just pretend like I ain't even see them. They were doing all that crying. I said, get out of here. I'm trying to watch the game. And, and they were hurt. They were hurt. Like, I'm oh, high. I said, get out of here. I'm trying to watch the game. And, and, and she thought I didn't love her, but I loved her. I just didn't show her no pity. All right. And so because the Jews had messed up, God told Hosea, he said, I want you to name one of your childs, Lo Rahama, and one of them the Lord me. He said, because I'm going to send a message that I'm just not going to have y'all any more pity. And so they went on and on and on. And so, and yet Hosea's obedience didn't just stop there. Because in chapter 3, God told Hosea, he says, because she kept going and did all that, and eventually she left the home. She went out on the street and, and, and continued to do all of that stuff. The children get old. You can skip chapter 2. And then you get to chapter 3, and God tells Hosea, now go back and get her. God says, I know she's been from bed to bed and, and every Tom, Dick, and Harry. And he says, but let's not forget that same male chauvinist story that Gomer is just symbolic of us. Amen. So Gomer was no longer a spring chicken and things had caught up with her, not pulling in the money she once made when she went into debt. And she had become a slave on the auction block. Hosea could not simply get her back. He had to buy her back. He had to pay for something that was really already his. 
And I'm willing to bet that most men wouldn't have been that obedient had it been them. Most men would have said, if, Reverend, she cleans herself up and if she gets her act together, if she apologizes on her knees, then I might think about it. Many people wouldn't do that. They would say, no way, Jose. <laughs> no, no, no. But Jose remained faithful to God. And it's no mistake, if we had time to go through all that, it's no mistake that the amount that he paid for her was the amount required by Mosaic law to redeem a slave, suggesting that she was not even one the amount that Judas took to betray, to betray Jesus. That's a sermon by itself there. So Paul paints this picture in Romans just to simply say that when mankind was at his work, when Gomer was as bad as she can be, when mankind, all the humankind, was at his worst point, Christ died for us. Yes. Paul paints that picture. It says when mankind was at his worst, spirit con condition, likening it to Gomer, Jesus paid it all. Yes. He paid it all, and I need to let you know he paid a little bit more than 15 shekels. God did not wait for us to get right. God knew that man was unable to get right. Gomer got to the point that she couldn't get right if she wanted to get right. And God knew that man was not capable of even cleaning himself up. So while we were yet sinners, when our lowest point spiritually, far from the peaceful shore, deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more, love lifted me. Hallelujah. I imagine Jose got up. Yes. He got the word of God and maybe put on one of his better suits. Kids says, Daddy, where are you going? He didn't answer. They didn't ask again, but they could just sense someone, right? Jose walked through the streets. They saw him. Barbara walked past Sam Druckers. They was afraid to ask. They knew someone, right? One of them finally asked, Why? He says, because I love her. Mercy. And that's the same love. Yes, yes. When man has messed up. Yeah, thank you. And Jesus. done all of that. Hallelujah. God says, why? Show love. Jesus Show love. says, yes. I love him. Hallelujah. And God says, go and get it. Mm, go God. back and get it. Yes. And after 40 and two generations, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. Stop right, praise him. God says, go and get it. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He paid it all. I think he paid a little bit more than 15 shekels. We didn't deserve it. And when we really, really understand that love, it's only then we can begin to love ourselves. Amen. I better stop and love others. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you for just helping us understand this thing of love. But we realize that when we recognize how you loved us and really, really understand that, that we can better love one another, even in our differences. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.